In this follow-up video, we will see a quick animation of how the neural network learns the sign function. So just as a recap, here we have in blue our data points, which we created artificially. Then in the orange, we have the neural network evaluated at the training points, but with the initial weights. And then we have it in green with the final learned weights, which is approximately already a sign function. So let's see how the network learns that over the epochs of the optimization. For this, we go right before the training loop and start with creating an animation object from the Julia plots package. Then let's create a set of points in X at which we want to query the functions that we can do a line plot. So in contrast to our scatter plot, they will be linearly spaced. So let's say X line is equal to a range from zero to two times pi with let's say 300 points. And then in order to comply with the special by batch dimension in Julia, we will reshape this which is by now just a vector into something that is a matrix with a shape of one by 300. Then we can query our neural network and say why prediction line is the network forward applied to X line with the current weight matrices, the current bias vectors, as well as the current, or they are not changing, but the activation functions. And then let's create a plot, let's call it P, and this will first be populated with scatter plot defined by the data points. So let's have a scatter plot of the x samples. And again, we use the colon indexing to flatten to a vector. Same for y samples. Let's also add the plot title here and say we are currently in epoch zero. So this is basically before any optimization. And then we will plot into this container. So let's do plot exclamation mark and then hand over the p object to plot in that very object. And what we are plotting is x line colon. Let me scroll down. Y prediction line colon. Let's do that in black and also change the line width to three. And then we can add this plot or the plot consisting of both the scatter and this line plot to our animation by calling the frame command and handing over the animation as well as the plot p. Now in order to get a meaningful learning, I want to reinitialize the optimization or the network. So I will go back to the top and shift enter everything here so that we will start fresh. Of course, due to the same random seed, we will get the same optimization. Here we go, that takes us some time. And then we have the animation being created. Julia does animations by creating a temporary folder here in Linux under the temp slash temp. And in there it will save all the pot plots it will use as um, frames for the animation. So here we go. Then we have the scatter and there we plot our initial line. And now we see this is no longer network evaluated at the training points, but uh, linearly spaced between zero and two times pi. Then let's add the frame. Then we have the loss history. And now before we execute our training loop, I want to also add the animation plotting at the same switch where we also do our printout. We will keep the X line. This does not change, but the Y prediction line has to be overwritten because of course the network parameters change due to the learning. So we will have to requery that. So let's call the network forward and same strategy. We will hand over X line as well as the current weight matrices and the bias vectors and the activation functions. And then we basically do the same as above. So let me just copy that. So I will copy this here and then bring it over there. Now I will indent it twice. Here we go. And then we can run the training loop. Hopefully it will work. So here we see. Now the training loop is a little bit slower because next to the actual training, we will also have the creation of the plots and saving it in the animation, but still this will be the same training. So we started from the same initial seed. So we have the same starting weights, same computation. Everything is deterministic. Okay, so about 3000 more epochs to go. And there we have it. Now we have the animation done and we can create a GIF out of this animation by calling GIF on anim and then let's run it. it, takes a little bit of time. It concatenates all the PNG files. And here we go, let me make that a little bit larger. And now we see an animation. It is also looping and I see, well, we don't change the number of epochs. So let's quickly alter this and interpolate in the epoch number. 
And then of course we need to reinitialize everything. So let me go all the way down here and then we run the tomato station again. I will cut to the end. Okay, here we go. Let's create another GIF. And now the epoch number is also updating. And you see how the network is learning this function and I think it's really beautiful. Also interesting to see that it first learns the, the, the first arc of the function and then starts to learn the second one, but it's slowly approaching. And it's just beautiful to see that. And this also showcases these incredible capabilities of neural network to approximate many functions. This channel is supported by Pasteur Labs and the Institute for Simulation Intelligence. Click the link in the video description to find out more how they merge machine learning and simulation in order to reimagine the scientific method. Also, a big thanks to all my Patreons. If you also want to support my vision of free education on advanced mathematical topics, you find the link to the Patreon page down in the video description. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, then please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. There is more awesome content, more videos on sign learning using different languages, different frameworks, so you can see the differences, sometimes with a custom backprop like here, but oftentimes using an automatic differentiation engine. Here you will now see similar videos, and I hope to see you in one of the next videos. Thank you.